Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net. I am joined by Chris Pate from Logitech. And we are talking about mice and sensors and sensor technology today. Uh, we've previously discussed keyboard technology and switches with Vincent, also from Logitech. And that went live during PAX Prime. Now we're talking about mice. So um, there is a new mouse that just came out. It was announced, the G303. The 303 has some uh, a, a heavier focus on the sensors precision and uses a similar body to the G302. 302. So that's what's going on. In terms of mice, are there any uh, major misconceptions with gaming mice that you feel like gamers should better understand? The biggest thing that, that uh, uh, probably should be made clear is that DPI is really about uh, just cursor sensitivity. It's not a measure of accuracy or precision, uh, and it's not a focus of development, like for the sensor that we are, the, the high-end sensor we've got in the 502 and the 302, we developed that with the idea that we're just going to create something incredibly accurate and responsive, and then after we figured out how to do that, we said, okay, how high can it go? Are there any other, any other items with uh, gaming mice when we're looking at specifications that as gamers we should be paying more attention to? Uh, so really the most important thing, and it's not a pure specification, is the overall accuracy of the sensor, right? So uh, when you you hear a lot of people talking about inaccuracy or speed related accuracy variance or, or resolution error versus speed, but uh, most of the time you'll hear it is as acceleration. So what that means is that um, for a given physical distance that you move a mouse, uh, depending on how fast you move it, the distance to the cursor moves on screen can change. There's a level of, uh, uh, of inaccuracy that people can't pick up on, but after it exceeds that level, it becomes really annoying to try to game with muscle memory. So with sensors that we label as Delta Zero, it is as close as possible to uh, uh, perfect accuracy as you can actually get. What about mouse smoothing? Can you, what, what is mouse smoothing? What is its purpose? And should gamers have it or not have it? So what smoothing does is it compares multiple frames of data from the sensor against each other in order to uh, literally smooth out the, the data that it's being sent to the system. So uh, in some cases, if you uh, are, are moving the cursor along, you'll see little blips up or down, um, uh, they're kind of spurious motion like that. Uh, it's called ripple, and smoothing literally uh, it compares multiple frames of data against each other to remove uh, or to lessen that ripple. Um, so one of the side effects of this is that depending on how many frames of information you're comparing against each other, like uh, you can have multiple milliseconds of delay between what the mouse is doing and what the cursor is showing on screen. Smoothing is a smoothing has a negative impact on, on cursor feel, uh, particularly at startup, so from zero to moving. Smoothing increases the time between when the mouse starts moving and when you actually see the cursor move and it becomes more perceptible as frame rates go higher and as uh, monitors start to refresh faster. So it's more easy to pick up on 120 hertz or 144 hertz monitor um, than it is on a 60 hertz monitor. What about mouse acceleration? Is, is that uh, also something we don't want in a gaming mouse? Or? In, in general, yeah, acceleration uh, or, or speed-related accuracy variance um, is detrimental to the gamer's ability to uh, play by muscle memory to do repeated motions through practice without having to uh, to rely solely on what they can see. And so you just said, uh, I think speed related accuracy variance. Accuracy variance. Is there a reason you're using that versus? So acceleration implies that it's um, a an inherent feature of the sensor, when really it's a it's a characteristic that is made visible by changing the speed that the mouse is moving, right? So the, depending on how fast the mouse is moving, uh, you can get different degrees of motion on screen. So it's an accuracy issue that is exposed by changing physical speed of the mouse. Uh, so with the, 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 the G502 and the G302, 303, sorry, um, the, we're using the PMW3366, which is the most advanced sensor that we have access to. Um, and the, the really kind of great thing about this sensor is, uh, uh, in addition to the fact that it's got zero smoothing across the entire DPI range, um, so 
either from 200 or 12,000, you don't have any post-processing that will add latency to the cursor in order to mitigate ripple or, or other spurious motion. Um, but it was not designed with the intent of pushing the DPI up. It was designed with the intent of creating as pure and, and connected of a cursor experience or, or point of view experience as you can get with, with current technology. Right? So um, we first designed the sensor and then we said, okay, now that we've got this great experience with zero smoothing, how far can we push it and keep the same experience? And 12,000 is, is where we decided to cut it off. And ultimately, I guess, as a buyer, you probably want to look at other features in the mouse aside from the DPI number, sure. including the, the controller used or the, or the sensor, I should say, that's used. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of DPI, is that a, uh, is that a marketing heavy number at this point? Is, does it still bear weight? Where does it bear relevance to the consumer? So DPI is literally just sensitivity. You know, so 12,000 DPI is just more sensitive than 10,000 DPI. That's it. it. The cursor moves faster. We're not trying to, like, say you need 12,000 DPI to be more accurate. It's, this is what the sensor's capable of, so we're giving you the ability to, to access it. You can use it or not. We're trying to give people more margin than they need, right? Same thing with, like, the sensor can track it up to 300 inches per second. The majority of people will never exceed, like, 80 inches per second based on our testing, right? So... For pro gamers who make a ton of money by relying on this hardware to do exactly what they needed to do, or the, exactly what they expected to do, um, the ability to be totally confident that move, you can't move the mouse faster than it can actually track is incredibly beneficial. So a mouse is tracking on a 2D plane, mm -hmm. when we're moving the mouse on a 2D plane, but we're uh, interpreting it for a 3D gaming space. Mm -hmm. What are, what are some of the concerns in that scenario uh, as it pertains to designing you know, sensors? This may be out, outside of Logitech, designing sensors or um, you know, making sure that data is, is received accurately by the game. And so this, this, this gets really complex. By default, every count that it receives from, from, the, uh, from the mouse driver turns like something into 0 0.22 degrees, right? And what you're trying to do is, is ensure that you don't have a level of sensitivity versus a level of DPI that causes you to jump from pixel to pixel and potentially miss a headshot or something like that. So there's a lot of arcane and, and almost voodoo math that goes into, right. uh, into making these decisions, but pros have kind of settled on 400 or 800 DPI as being their preferred starting point, and they adjust their sensitivity to what feels good. Ultimately, it's just like um, any other component of the mouse, right? The shape. You, you buy a shape that's comfortable, right? That's what you start with. Um, you, you try to find a, a sensor that performs the way that you want it to in a shape that's comfortable. And you try to find settings that are compatible within the game and the mouse sensor and the mouse shape that are that are going to give you a comfortable experience there too. So it's all about setting it up so that it feels comfortable and natural to you so that you can not have to worry about compensating for any kind of irregularities and just focus on the game itself. Right. So for more information on mice, sensors, the hardware, uh, links in the description below. The G303, we already have an article online for that, so check that out. Uh, and that is linked for you as well. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks for your time, Chris. Sure thing. Thank you.